Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us once again with uh, Men of Intercession. My name is uh, Deacon Ron Wise, and we are uh, in for a treat tonight as we are gathered here to uh, just uh, just talk about some of the uh, how to overcome some of the challenges as fathers uh, here for uh, you know just in time for Father's Day. Although this, we're still a couple of weeks early. But uh, we're just going to be doing this uh, in advance just so we can, uh, you know, just have a good time in the Lord and just get some uh, some some uh, some clarification or, or some questions that others may have out there. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, first off, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Deacon Ron Wise from Wise Choice Ministries. And uh, we have here the uh, men of intercession. Uh, I'm going to introduce... Um, the men one by one. First, we have, uh, I'd like to introduce Pastor Baker. He is the, the visionary of men of, uh, of intercession. Uh, past, Pastor Baker, would you uh, have a few words for uh, the people that's, that's watching? I want to say thank you all for taking the time to be with us. And as Deke has already said, we are looking forward to having uh, just a fun time and a time of word and encouragement for each and every one. Mm -hmm. And uh, just get involved and enjoy. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, uh, uh, first of all, we're going to just, I have a question for, since we have a, a large panel of men here uh, of uh, different age, we're not going to get into the ages here, but. I think we all are a little seasoned here. Um, I have a question for uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Harrison. You're first up, and uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce him. This is Pastor Pastor uh, Harrison, and uh, he's just a man that loves to pray. And when I tell you he loves to pray, he's a man that's after God's own heart. He, he's a man that's that's just just uh, wants to equip others. Um, he likes to intercede for others. And uh, he's just an awesome, uh, uh, awesome man of God. And I, I, I you know, he, I, I can't do this. We all can't do this by ourselves. You know, we, we need a team, and he's uh, part of the team. And uh, he, he does what he do, and he does it well. But I, I'd like to ask you a question, Pastor. What is the significance of a father to you? <laughs> well, praise God, Deacon. Praise God. I'm glad you raised. Praise God. First of all, we need to understand the meaning of significance. The meaning of significance in, in Webster uh, Dictionary is uh, the quality of being important. Now, I'm going to discuss um, some factors that are very important of being a, a godly man or a godly father, perhaps a godly father. It's just a little twist I'm putting in there. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> First, we got to understand that being a godly father, it is, it is important to teach his children and family. We teach his children by, the God, by God's word, understanding God's word by, by looking to, the Bible says, looking to the hills that come with your help, looking to God, being, being that person that, that put God first by seeking him first in his ways, in all your ways of his family. In Proverbs 22 and 6, it says, train up a child in the way he should go, so that even when he is old, he will not depart from it. It's about learning God's word, teaching our children God's words, first thing. The second thing is, a godly, a godly father provides an example worth following. Uh, it reminds me of the military or the United States Army. We always have to set the, as, as being a leader, we always have to set the example. Always. In Proverbs 20, chapter, verse 7, is the, the, it says, The righteous who walks in his integrity, bless are the children after him. That's, that's very powerful right there in itself. And we just got to more like us. Uh, be who God called us to be, be in our rightful place. And by being in our rightful place, 
asking the Holy Spirit, asking God, where do you want us to be? Where do you want us to say? Where do you want us, want us to go? Ask those questions, because we don't know everything. You know, we, need to, we as men need to put our egos to the side and begin to humble ourselves before God. Our third thing we need to do is um, a godly father disciplines his children. According to Proverbs 13 and 24, whoever spares the rod hates his sons, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. You know, so as a child, I remember as, as a child, my, my mother and father used to discipline me, and they would say something like, well, you know, it's going to hurt me more than it hurt you. I can I not understand that at first, you know. Right. Now as I get older and I understand the things of what they're saying, it, it really hurts, the pain. You don't want to see you know, your child hurt. You know, we, we as a, a, a man, you know, a godly man, we protect we protect our family. We protect our children. We, won't, we don't want no no harm come a, come for them. You know, uh, come against them. Uh, that's love. That's unconditional love we provide, and we that's our part of our DNA. So you know that in itself that we need to uh, understand about discipline. You know, discipline them the right way, not to hurt or harm them, not to create any kind of strife against us. So the next thing I would say, the next thing is, uh, factor is, is that God the Father loves his children. Love, love, love. We understand that God's love never fails. God, when he gives his love, he sent his son, you know, down to us for, to say, you know, our sins, that being that a, an example, he, he loves us. And he shares his by his blood. He loves us, you know. And I understand you got to understand that in the third John, third chapter of John, one verse four, it says, I have now no greater no joy than to that my children are walking in the truth. So we need to understand that when we love our children and teaching them God's ways. We need to understand to speak the truth, to tell them how to be true and honesty in life, and it will take you a long way. Praise God. Hallelujah. The next thing is, um, the fifth thing is a godly father prays. A godly father needs God's help. You can't do it by yourself. That's right. So that, you know, we need, we need a higher power. We need, we need, God's help in everything that we do. We need to understand that. We need to humble ourselves. We need to understand that without him, we can't do nothing. So we need to uh, understand that we need God's help. And First Thessalonians 5th, 5th chapter, verse 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Pray for your children. By praying for your children, you're praying for yourself to be a good father. You know, being a good father, a godly father, that's what it, it, it matters the most, being a godly father. Praise God. Before the Lord, last but not least, according to James, the first chapter and verse five, five chapter, five verse, you know, we need to pray and ask God for wisdom and to raising our children. Uh, we as godly father, we need to set the example and not only that, be a, a good husband for our wives. Uh, if any of you likes, it says in uh, James, the uh, first chapter, verse 5, it says, If any of you likes wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. So, my thing, my encouragement to fathers now, this on, on Father's Day, is to fathers. All to all fathers, fathers be encouraged. Continue to teach, set the example, discipline, and show love and pray always without ceasing. Be encouraged. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, you, you broke that down real good. And uh, 
You know, I know I, I could use some nuggets in there, and uh, I'm sure everybody uh, can can take something out of that. Um, so I, I thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, next, we're going to have uh, words of wisdom by um, our very own visionary, Pastor Baker. Um, just a few words about Pastor uh, Pastor Baker. Uh, he's the pastor of Kingdom Builders of Faith. Um, he's a visionary of men of intercession. And his contact information is 904-228-3806. And uh, if you would like to uh, be a part of uh, men of intercession, that's the number and that's the person that you need to contact. Uh, Pastor Baker is uh, he, he's a uh, he's like a, a, a father. He's got a lot of knowledge, and we we speak on on a weekly basis. And um, you know he he every time we, we speak, he pours knowledge into me that makes me a better person. So I really appreciate him and uh, the relationship that we have together. So uh, so Pastor uh, Pastor Baker, speaking of a, a man of words of uh, uh, wisdom. Uh, we're going to ask that you just share a few uh, few words of, of wisdom for uh, for us and for uh, Facebook out there, if you will, please. Amen. Give an honor to God. All glory go to him. And I bring you greetings, like Deke has already said, from Kingdom Bills of Faith, but my pastor is Dr. Karen Baker. The words of wisdom this afternoon Holy Spirit laid on my heart to speak of about peace. Mm -hmm. Peace. That peace that every Christian needs as Christians. When we walk in with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we are doing the creep, when we are doing this Christian walk, when we are walking this path, we need peace. And that peace that we could only get the peace of God, not the worldly peace. We need the peace of God. And the peace of God comes through by praying, praying, and supplication. In other words, laying before God. Just putting it all out there on him, trusting and depending on him. And when we're talking about peace, how many of you know we are actually talking about faith? We are talking about faith. Without faith, then there is no way we can have the peace that we need because we need peace in God. We need to be able to trust God in all things and everything that we do. When we go to God in prayer, when we got a decision to make, when things are going on in our lives that that we just can't seem to get over. We have to, we must. It's important that we trust God and have faith when we go to him in prayer that he is going to hear our prayer. He's going to give us an answer to whatever we petition him to. And again, this comes by faith. And we're talking about that peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding. And when God gives us that answer, when he gives us that answer, we must believe with all our heart, mind, and soul that it is for the our best interest. God does not make no mistakes. I don't care what we want, how bad we want it, but if God say no, that's what it is, no. How do you know that you are hearing from God? Well, if you are a man and woman of God, then you will know the spirit by the spirit. And through that spirit, the Holy Spirit, he's going to give you an answer. And when the answer comes, saints, trust, believe, use the answers, and I guarantee you the peace that you need in your heart, mind, and soul will be filled with the peace, the happiness, the joy, You'll be able to move forth and follow, putting that situation behind and getting over it. In Colossians, in Colossians, the third chapter in the 15th verse, it says, we are one with Christ. We are one with Christ when the peace of Christ rules in our heart. So saints of God, get that peace. 
that surpasses all understanding. And as, for, as Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Verse 7, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Trust, believe in God, and all will be well. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen, amen. Hey man, we're waiting on Deke, the moderator, to come back. Uh, I don't know where he's at, but I'm sure he'll be back in a minute. But in the meantime, while we're waiting on him, then uh, we're going to go forth and follow. And uh, my son, Brother Baker, he's online, and I'm going to ask him if you have a chance to look over the questions, or would you like to expound on one of the, the questions? Tell us what you think about it. One of the questions was, uh, what, is it, does it, what is it to be a father? I have um, the privilege and, uh, and the uh, opportunity from God to be a father of five children. And the blessing is amazing. My children range from age 30 to four. <laughs> I've seen the, 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 the amazingness of everything that God has offered for a father. But to me, to be a father is, is, is more than to... To then the financial and uh, the things that we think fathers supposed to do is that little stuff that you do in the background. I always, I'm a military man, retired Navy, 22 years, I was Navy retired chief. And most of the stuff I did was in the background. They mm -hmm. never it, they never noticed the things that we did inside, outside of the, their, their vision. And that's what father is. Father is a person that prays in the midnight hour, that prays and, and, and cries and walks in the room in the middle of the night and they know their baby going through a sickness and touch him, put his hand on his chest and pray for him. The father who knows his daughter, her son is going through the things that he go through, and they sit in front of the, and, and they at the altar and they pray to God for them for that for the children. To me, that's what that it is to be a father. It's not the thing that you're supposed to. That's you're supposed to. The things supposed to. That's your duty. The things you do outside of that that makes you a father. And to yeah. me, that that's your father. Hey man, hey man. Hey, man. I, I guess he, uh, he he had the words of wisdom. Praise yeah. God for both yeah. for, for for brother Baker and. Uh, are you back, Dick? Great. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah I'm All right. right. Sorry about that. I had some technical difficulties there. But uh, yeah, you know, just as, as you were saying, go ahead, go ahead, Pastor. I, I ain't going to cut you off. Oh, no, I was finished. I was, I was just waiting on you. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you know, as y'all see, the apple don't fall far from the tree. That's, uh, that's Brother Baker, you know, son of Pastor Baker. And, uh, you know, I, I, I see another pastor, a, a third Pastor Baker. Within him, I, I heard him preach one time, and uh, he's he's definitely a man on fire for God. So uh, we just take it into an existence. Uh, uh, Pastor Baker, uh, 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 everybody know him as Brother ba Baker, but I'm gonna call him Pastor Baker. Speak all right, I, <laughs> all right. Next, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a little fun. We're gonna have some icebreakers. Um, I'm gonna just ask ask a few questions. And it's going to be for Facebook as well. So Facebook can answer these questions as well. But for the panel, here we go. If you could relive any day in your life, what would you choose? Any day in your life, if you can relive it, what would you choose? All right, everybody, don't, don't answer. I'll say the, um, the day my... My youngest son was born. He's four years old now. I was 46 when he came to the world, and I was like, Lord, you got to be playing. But when he stepped out to the world, he stepped out boldly. And I stood next to his, um, his in, into the, in, the, in the room with him and his, my wife, and I looked at him, and I saw the future. And it just changed my mindset, my aspect on life, everything forever. So that would be, if I could do that again, I, I, I would love it forever. Yeah, that's good. You know, kids, you know, when they're when they're born, it's, you know, they always hold a special bond in our heart. And, uh, you know, even when they get older, you know, we always tend to look back and think, you know, when they uh, when they when they were small, when they you know, when we were swallowing them and, uh, you know, feeding them. 
And, uh, you know, sometimes we look at them now and we'd be like, wow, those those days went by fast. You know, so those early days in life when you when the kid is born there, um, you know, those, those are times to cherish. So I can definitely understand that. Uh, the next question I have. All right. If you could spend if you want ten thousand dollars, what would you spend it on? Ten thousand dollars. What would you buy? Now that's not a hard question. <laughs> not not this is for the pounds. Uh, he's asking for the pounds. The people that's looking on Facebook that you, I'm sure somebody out there has some ideas. So come on in with them. Yeah, Facebook and, and, and the panel. It's an open discussion for all. If you had ten thousand dollars, what would you spend it on? I know Anybody? It, for me, it would be investing in like uh, uh, community service. That would be the thing I would probably invest it in. Not all of it, but the majority of it, investing in community service, nonprofits. Because a lot of things, they do a lot of outreach to reach out to the uh, less fortunate and everything. So part of that would go to that. And then uh, probably definitely take a trip someplace I haven't been uh, and always wanted to go. Okay. Yeah, that's good. You know, because uh, I think we all would like, uh, you know, to travel, especially since we've been in this pandemic, um, you know, to get away for a few days, you know, maybe go to an island and, and uh, you know, just, you know, soak up the sun and, you know, uh, sit on the beach, you know, dig our feet in the sand. So, yeah, I, I agree. I, I, that's one thing that I would do too. I'd travel and get away too for a little while. All right. Uh, next question. If you could have any talent or gift, what would you choose? And I know what I would choose. If you could have any talent or gift, what would you choose? Come on now. I, I, would, I would choose uh, wisdom, I think, because okay. I need wisdom to be a good father and to be also a blessing for of uh, mankind as well. Okay, that's good. That's good. Any, <coughs> anybody else? I would choose musician. Musician. Okay. Okay. That's good. You, you like you are uh, you like music, huh? You like to play the keyboard or the drums or something, or, or sing or, or or what? What? I would love to play the keyboard so I can play it for the church. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, and anybody else? I'm, I'm gonna start calling on people. I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I have one. Uh, big. I got one. Uh, what about uh, singing? I would love to have a voice. I would uh, remind me of singing and dancing. Be like David. He he, he came out in clothes and started singing and dancing for the Lord, praising God. All right, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know I, I can't sing or dance, so that would definitely uh, be a, a, a talent or a gift that I would use. But that wouldn't be, be one that I would choose. Um, if I if I could choose anything, I would choose to be invisible. I want to be invisible, so just just so I can walk anywhere I want to walk, and nobody would see me. You know, everybody always say, "Man, if, man, if I could be a fly on the wall, well, I'd be that fly on the wall." <laughs> If I yeah. hear something you don't want to hear. Huh? <laughs> you mess around and hear That's something good. you That's don't want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well then you you would know what people really think about you. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. I, I got one. Uh, I would probably ask for super uh, natural strength like Samson. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I hear you. Okay. That probably yeah, so, is like Samson had. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't you wouldn't want your weakness to be your hair though, would you? Oh no, except for that. No, I wouldn't not, not that weakness. I, I would do good with that strength he has. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, he has strength. Yeah, but his weakness was that was that long uh flowing flowing hair he had. 
All right, next question. Uh, let's see. If you could create a, a national holiday, what would it be? National holiday. I will create a four day work week. Okay. Three day That's work good. week. Mainly three day work week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and all Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay. That's good. So yeah. you don't have, have to worry about uh, enjoying the weekend or have to work. You'll be able to, everybody have a weekend off. Yeah. Anybody else? Who, who haven't we heard from? We haven't heard from. Uh, who? Uh, Brother Bake. Oh, he, he spoke. I think everybody did have something to say. Oh, my mom. My mom said I would like I would like to be a prayer warrior. Amen. That's my mama. She said she want to be a prayer warrior. All right. That's that. That's an awesome uh, talent. You know, you know, to get a prayer through through God. You know, we all need that. We all got prayers. We want. We want to reach reach our. Uh, you know, to reach God. If you could take a mission trip anywhere in the world, where would you choose to go on a mission trip? I would go to Greece. I wonder, uh, it's a, the, I've been in Greece before, but there's some mountainous areas in Greece where they don't allow Christianity. And um, it would be a good thing to go out there and, and find a way to get the word out there to the, to the people out there in that land. I can't, I can't think of the name of the, the mountain right now, but it's uh, I, I, when I was in Greece, they talked about it. They don't, they're not allowed to preach or talk or mention Christianity in that area of the world at all. So it'd be great to go somewhere like that in the world to go out there and, um, and try to put the word out there. All right. We got a Facebook comment. Uh, Miss Joy Crumb says she would like to go to Africa. And yeah, Greece, I'd like to go to uh, Greece too, you know, and 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 view just some of the uh, the, the terrain and, and you know, uh, whatever they have over there to see, I'm not sure what's over there, but I like to go anywhere and see anything different. You know, Florida, we're here in Florida, and it's all flat. It's either flat and, and in water. So uh, I like I like to go to Greece and definitely Africa. Uh, I, I want to get over to Africa one day and, and uh, you know see all the animals and and uh, you know uh, all that Africa has to offer. And uh, Miss Linda said, "Amen, Miss Linda Wilson." So we thank you for your Facebook comments. Uh, next, we're going to have, um, I have another question for Pastor, Pastor Harrison. Now, no, Nick and Andre, I want you to answer this question. Uh, how would you overcome challenges as a father? Well, first of all, but before I, before I ask you that question, Nick and Andre is a member of um, Love Alive Church, and that's here in Middleburg, Middleburg Florida. Love Alive Church. Church in Middleburg, Florida. So, uh, Deacon Andre, he he's uh he's he's definitely a prayer warrior. Glad to have him a part of the group. Uh, he he's definitely a man that uh that, that intercedes for for everybody, you know, for the world, for men of intercession. So we uh he's a great addition. So thanks for uh, being with us tonight, uh, Minister uh, Andre. But how would you, as a father, how 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 would you overcome challenges as a father? Well, I think one of the things as a father, we have, it is inevitable that we will have challenges. Oh, so yeah. That's the main thing. You have to accept that you're going to have challenges uh, and it's going to affect, it's going to hit you in every area of your life as a father. Uh, spiritual, natural, uh, uh, mentally, physically, it's going to, challenge is going to come. But the beauty of the challenge is that you have to remember, I think one of the things I had to learn is that I cannot suffer in silence. I cannot think I'm the only one going through it. I cannot isolate myself from any other brothers or for anybody because I remember this old saying that when I was on the ship, uh, like a uh, 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 Pastor Baker's son, I was in the military and, uh, and one of the statements I used to always use was the enemy always isolate to assassinate. So if I can get you away from everybody else and don't let nobody know our little secret, the things that you're going through, the challenges that you're going through and feel like that you're the long range yes. to where you really feel like that, who can I talk to? Because uh, as men, we always have to be at this level of performance. 
We always got to be formed. We always got to be at this level of performing. We cannot show our weakness. That's why a lot of times we was taught as, as young men or little boys, uh, be strong. Men don't cry. Men don't show emotions. So when those right. challenges come, we cannot show our uh, humanity, which is our emotional God given us. Uh, the sadness, the fear, the anxiety, with all the, all those things that come along in that. So I would say when the challenges come, be be prepared for them. You know, uh, we always had to say in the military, you prepare for war in time of peace. So you gird yourself up, you gird up your mind when those challenges come. Don't think that you're the only one going through it. Make sure that you get the, uh, the tools you need in order to face the challenges. Don't think that uh, a lot of times that we going to face challenges without information or without having someone to come along to help us. As uh, Pastor Harris has said earlier, you can't do it by yourself. That's one of the things you cannot do it by yourself. That's iron so sharpens true. iron. So if you fall, who's there to pick you up? You know, and the Bible, and I always be fascinated how the Bible says one can put a thousand to polite and two can put 10,000. But I'm thinking if one can put 1,000 or one can put a thousand and two can put uh, it should be 2,000, but when there's two, you can put more and you can get strength whenever you're going through or whenever you have the challenges. You know, number one, don't suffer in silence. Don't be a, a isolated. Don't think that you're the only one that's going through it. Don't be an island and always ask for help. There's nothing wrong with as a man asking for help because once you do not get the help as far as a man, now you're going to uh, reproduce, especially if you have sons, you will reproduce that in your sons to make them feel like that. You don't, you don't need to talk to nobody. You just tough it out. You go through it and you live and learn. But a lot of, one of the things I've learned is to where they always had the same, the best experience is self-experience. And I totally disagree with that statement because I don't need to experience AIDS to know that it can kill me. So I'd rather learn from others' mistakes. So I don't have to make the same mistakes that th they have made because, uh, if you don't learn from the choices you make, then history will repeat itself. So if you go through the challenges, ask for help. Don't be afraid. And and and, and we have to be transparent as men. That's the main thing. We must be transparent as men and feel like that, okay, I can talk to this brother. That's why we have inter, uh, the men of intercession. Because when we do go through those things, and we, which we will, we will go through those life challenges. We will go through life. We will go through disappointment. We will go through all of whatever life have to throw at us. But we're knowing that, number one, you're not going through it alone. You got help, the Holy Spirit, uh, spiritually. You got help from your other brothers or people who you have in your circle to encourage you in your holy of holies and, uh, uh, and your inner and outer court. So you always have to use the people that God have placed in your life and the friends who you have. So uh, when those challenges come, just be prepared that, okay, I can get through this. Don't look at the challenge. Look at the end result. My goal is I'm going to get through this. Amen. 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 A lot of, Amen. lot of knowledge there. A lot, lot of knowledge. Uh, and even, uh, you know, uh, I've never been in the military before, but I can relate to, to what you're saying and the things that you've experienced and been through. So I thank you for sharing that uh, with, with us and, uh, and uh, Facebook. Uh, Pastor Harrison, I'm going to ask you the same question. How, how would you yeah. overcome uh, challenges as a father? <laughs> Well, I would say um, I will overcome challenges as a father. Uh, I got some of my information from according to uh, John the Wilsman. Uh, he, was, he wrote a book on parenting by the, uh, parenting by the book. Uh, sometimes we feel as dads feel like we feel like failures. And that is 44% of father made common of this. They feel like a failure. They can't do this. They can't do that. Uh, and I'm not making enough of money and, and all those sorts of things that uh, dads, they want to be intentional, making 42%, not having enough energy after work for for the kids. So uh, they seem to have not, have not energy for marital problems, uh, to figure out things and when our next meal or taking your wife out for dinner or those sort of things, you know, spending that time, that quality time. Uh, they struggle with the, the discipline and training. Now, fourteen percent struggle with this. Dad do that. Then our fathers do. Um, and training is a, a uh, I should say, discipline and training is one of the biggest uh, challenges faced as a father. You know, especially if they say, "Fans of you, you're a father, you have uh, 
your your son or your your daughter is handicapped, how do you discipline them? Them, you know, that's a challenge in itself. You know, you don't want to do anything or say anything to hurt them. You always want to comfort them and love them. So you got to find ways of uh, of you know, knowing how to uh, overcome the challenges of that. Um, you may, and and the factors, some of the factors where I may say is uh, inability to pay child support. Um, your money get funny. <laughs> Things of that nature. You know, unemployment. You can't get a job. You know, where I go now. So it basically this pandemic. You know. Uh, it's competition, you know, always, it's always competition to find a job. Um, lack of money to buy things for their, ch for your children. You know, that's one of the challenges in itself. That's something that's not even said to be, you know, what do you do? What can you go? Who can you go? Who can you talk to? You know, uh, have the inability to pay bills. You know, you as the breadwinner, or you may be the breadwinner, uh, you, you are your leader of the house. And you have to think outside the box and find ways, you know. And so now the thing that you can think about is that, okay, what should I do? Now, here's some of the health ideas that we can move forward, that the person can move forward or um, experience those, those challenges. One is, first of all, you got to understand, you got to admit my mistakes and ask for unforgiveness. Um, if you made a mistake, Ask for forgiveness. And I guarantee you, you know, once you pray with a broken heart, you know, God say he, I'm paraphrasing right now, a broken heart, he listens. He's there to, to listen. When you have a broken heart, he asks for forgiveness. See, some of us, you know, us as Christians, as Christ followers, we go around and we don't actually ask for forgiveness. We just go around and like, we don't care. But we are hurting. We are in pain. You know, another thing is stop trying to be God to your children. Uh, instead, study and show God's character. Uh, you know, try to point out some things and, you know, you being like, you know, how you say it, we say you sometimes top dog and everything, but it's not all about that. It's about, it's about, it's about God himself and it's about humbling yourself and being that, that person, being that example of that leader in your household. Stop, stop trying, to, another thing is stop trying to compare yourself as a perfect dad around others. You know, we all have faults. We all need each other. And we got to ask for, you know, guidance, you know, prayer, our prayer life. You got to go when you go through life. You know, life can throw a curveball. And sometimes it may, may, may throw a fastball to you, but you got to adapt. Adapt to changes. And the challenges, it, they're always going to be there. But you got to overcome them as well. You got to also learn to say no. Some of us don't know how to say no. As far as a leader, I myself, I'm talking about myself. I got to learn to say no of things, especially if it's not right. Especially if it's not right in the eyesight of God. You got to say no and begin to seek God for guidance. Find a mentor. I thank God for many ministries. You know, I got mentors here, and, and that I that I that I can confront, confront, and console, confront with, and we talk some things about mainly man things, and that's what we need in our lives. We don't need, you know, we can't figure it out by ourselves. You know, we don't fail at all times, and you get with other godly men. You know, uh, like I said, you know, many intercessors, you know. It, it does, you know, it does mean I'm, I'm happy, I'm joyful for every Wednesday I come and I'll be so happy of getting around uh, fellowship and godly men. See, so there's power in godly men, you know, especially, you know. So I just, you know, our, our prayers, when we pray, we come together, we are hitting the mark all the time, you know, because God is in it. And that's what make a difference in in our lives and lives of others when we intercede for them too. So, in other words, you know, uh, we got to keep at it and be consistent. That's the thing. You know, sometimes we, we like to go and keep, uh, do something. Uh, we may pray, we may uh, discipline our children just for a little bit, you know, or uh, they may come at a time that, you know, 
where we should be loving them, we discipline them. You know, so back and forth, you know, we're going back and forth, but we need a balance in everything that we do, a spiritual balance. But last but not least, we need to always pray and seek God continually. Once we do that, we cannot go wrong by yeah. putting others in our lives. Yeah, that, that's so true. That, that's it in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Yes. Um, you know, because we we as men, um, uh, humans, you know, we we will fail, um, but it's important that we seek God uh, in the things that we're doing because we want we want to please God. We want to do things pleasing in the eyes of God. And the only, the only way how only way we can do that is if we're uh, is if we have a relationship with them and if we earnestly seek in him before we make decisions. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we will fail from time to time, but learning from our mistakes is, is, uh, is a good thing and not repeating those same mistakes. Uh, we, we learn from it, we move on and we teach others so that they don't have to make those mistakes. So thanks for sharing that with us. Um, I, I really appreciate that. That was, that was a lot of good information. Um, I have another question. Uh, how would you like to leave a legacy for your children? How would you like to leave a legacy for your children? I'm gonna ask Minister Wilson to uh, answer that question. Uh, the type of legacy I would like to leave for my children is an example of having a great prayer life. Because when you have a prayer life, that prayer life can be passed on generations down. Um, this is something um, I learned from my mother because I didn't have a father around, but I would always watch her intercede and pray. And, and, and I learned these things from her. And, and me, um, I like the old uh, times like in the Bible where the fathers would call the sons in and lay their hands on them and speak blessings onto them. and. Or, you know, for the next generation to the generations down. Because I remember, you know, as my kids were little and I would be in my prayer time, my wife would be at work at night. So it would just be me and my boys. And this was led by the unctions of the Holy Spirit. God taught me this himself. I would bring my boys in the room and I would lay hands on them and I would begin to speak into their future, into their destiny. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit would come and fall and, you know, they didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. I was speaking in tongues, but God was instilling and imparting something into them. I don't think we have enough of that now today uh, in the church. And I think that fathers need to get back to the basics where we just take our children, sons and daughters and grandchildren, lay our hands on them, speak destiny into them. Because sure as, there's, sure as each individual has a destiny, Satan is trying to stop and block that destiny. And the perfect example is Christ when he was born in the earth. And um, <clears throat> they had heard the story of the Savior coming, but Jesus' star was so bright that you had to be walking in the spirit to see his star. His star meant destiny. It meant a great destiny. So when you're born into this earth, each person has a star, a destiny. And But Jesus' destiny was so strong and so powerful that you only had, you had to be walking in the spirit to see it. But... God is so good, everything is in your destiny. And when, G and when they brought gifts unto Jesus, um, the Lord knew that these men were gonna come after Christ to kill him. So when they brought these gifts, these gifts were the things that helped help him survive. You know, you know they're gonna need food, you know they're gonna need clothes, you know they're gonna need this. But God provided all that. So this is why I say prayer is so important because it's a, it's a lot of people out here that has a bright star a bright destiny, a bright future. And your destiny and your star can be passed down. It's, it's, it's a thing that each person has a destiny designed by God that your star is gonna draw attention. Your star, your destiny is gonna draw attention. So we pray and we speak of our children so their star and their destiny will be fulfilled. This is what they did in the Old Testament times and you know Isaac would lay hands on Jacob and then Jacob on his children and so on and so forth and so on. So each person has a particular responsibility and a destiny in this earth to achieve. And by us imparting the things of God into our children, this, this, this destiny can continue on and on and on down to the fourth, fifth, 10th generation. And these are the things that I like about, it. I think that fathers 
enough of them don't take the time, you know, because like my grandkids are not here, but I'll lay a prayer. I say, Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, I speak destiny into my children. I speak Amen. destiny into my grandchildren. I speak destiny into my daughters. I speak destiny into my mother. Let nothing hinder the destiny that you got for us on earth to do. Father, let our star go unchallenged. Father, let our star shine bright in this earth. Father, you're the head, Father God. And you're the head, and you made us the head, and we're not the tail. So I, I believe in laying hands on each individual, or if you can't get there, just calling names out in prayer. That's the destiny I want to leave with my kids, or the legacy for my kids, to let them know that you can achieve everything through prayer, and by proclaiming and decreeing and, and um, speaking the thing over yourself, your family, and your children. Amen. And, and I, I like that what you said, you know, about even speaking, um, speaking those things, um, you know, into in the generations uh, that, that that's here and, and the generations to come, you know, speak, speaking those things over your kids and, and future kids and grandkids. Um, that That's good. That's good that you shared that. Um, a lot of people, because I, I, I didn't think about that, you know, speaking, uh, speaking over uh, my grandkids and, 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 great grandkids, you know. Um, so I, I thank you for that. And that was uh, everybody that's, that's Minister Wilson. Uh, the, name of his, the name of his ministry is Tip of the Spear Ministry. And they teach warfare, dream interpretation, and prophetic ministry. And his email is uh, wilsonrodney at 556 at gmail.com. So if you want to reach out to him, that's his information, Wilson Rodney. 556 at gmail.com and he teaches spiritual warfare, dream interpretation, and uh and, and prophetic. So uh so we thank you for that for sharing that with us. Um uh, I'm gonna ask uh evangelist uh evangelist Simon. He's all the way from the Republic of Congo in Africa, which Sunday I'm, I'm gonna get over there. I'm just I'm gonna speak it into existence, just like uh Minister just talked about. I'm gonna speak it. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna own a win, but I'm gonna get there one day. I'm gonna get there one day. Um, his uh, his ministry is uh, what well, well, he he is he equipped uh, and coached church leaders and planting uh, strategies. So I, I believe he plant churches over there in the Congo, and he's definitely a equipper and uh, and a coach. Uh, he's all the way from the Republic of Congo. Uh, so we have none other than Evangelist Simon. Uh, thank you, uh, Deacon Rice, and greetings to you all. I appreciate you. And uh, my blessing to those who are on Facebook. Uh, first of all, I would like to, to say to God be the glory for the great, the great things uh, he has done, uh, saving us blessing us with uh, sp special uh, spiritual blessings and uh, bringing us together uh, this evening. In uh, Deuteronomy uh, 6, verses 4 to 9, uh, God instructs uh, his people when to pass on the word of God to children. During breakfast, lunch, dinner, leisure time, working, and so on. So it's important for me as a father to establish an atmosphere of love in our relationship as a family, loving God and uh, loving the others, loving God by uh, our prayer, prayer life as a, a couple, as a, a family, and as individuals as well. Loving the others by being there for them uh, them, I mean, being there for my family, my, my, my children, having time with them and providing as well for their needs, uh, education, food, gloves, and so on. And I often have time also uh, of speaking words of blessing upon my kids. Sometimes when they are sleeping, I enter their rooms and I pray, uh, blessing them, uh, because I want the future to be, uh, uh, blessed, and uh, I, I I will always uh, be uh, delightful if uh, when I will see my my children being uh, uh, a light, a model, 
and a blessing for the generation as well. Uh, I would like to quote uh, scriptures in Psalms 127, verse 1. It is said, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. So um, I think it is important to have God in our midst, in the midst of our fa family, and to give God as uh, the pure and the everlasting um, uh, legacy. Uh, because if we are building a family together with God, we will be successful. And also in uh, Psalm 112, uh, verses 1 and 2, it is said, Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his commands. His children will be mighty in the land. A generation of the, up, of, of the upright will be blessed. So here we can say that the word of God is clear, that we have to be a good example of shepherd as a father or husband in integrity and other good values. This is what I have to, to say and to encourage each of us uh, uh, speaking of uh, the kind of uh, legacy we would like to leave uh, to our children. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you for that. Thank you for that, uh, um, evangelist. Uh, Pastor Baker, did you want uh, did you want to say something? Um, well, I was just listening and, at everyone, and it's it's encouraging. It's encouraging that all the men hearing them talk about raising their families. And it's a blessing to me that uh, most of the men that, from what I'm hearing, had godly homes. They had fathers in their homes. They was, they was blessed. And they were able to glean from their fathers how to raise their children. And I don't want you to take that for granted. Because some of us, I think uh, one, of, one, one of our ministers, I believe it was Pastor Wilson, uh, if I'm wrong, forgive me. He, like I, didn't have a father in the home. So if he was anything like me, we had to learn how to be a father raising our children. Amen. And there were mistakes made. I made many mistakes. But to God be the glory, that's not an excuse to keep making mistakes. So I would, now I pray for my children. I pray, my prayer is I pray for my children, my children's children's children. I pray for my seed and my seed, seed, seed. I pray, pray blessings over all my children. So that's what we men has to have to do. And we have to, not let the way we were raised continue to hold us down and not make us better, fa better, better fathers. So I strive daily to be a better father. I have asked my children to forgive me for the mistakes I made and the things that I did. That I and so go to your children. If you know you didn't do it right, go to them and ask for forgiveness. They could, they would appreciate that. Right. Also, while I'm here, I would like to let you know that the men of intercession, we have a vision. And I was listening to uh, uh, the man, and our vision is to bring prayer back in the homes across the globe. Bring prayer back in the homes across. Let our children see us pray. Be visible. Let, let yourself be visible to your children and your families and their friends praying. It means a lot. It goes a long ways. So I, that's our vision. And, to, and, and just be more godly men in our homes. 
for our children, families, and friends. Our vision is to just create a mountain, a mountain of godly children growing up to be godly men. Amen. 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 Thank you Amen. for uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Baker uh, and, and Trey Trey to Don say happy Happy Father's Day, uh, Rodney Wilson. So Trey to Don, I'm sure you know who that is. Um, and uh, Alice Salisbury said, uh, great, "Greatest legacy is teaching uh, your children to pray for, uh, pray from generation to generation." Yeah, that's true. You know, we have to pray for uh, the generation that that's uh, the present and the future. Um, I didn't have a specific question, um, but I'm just going to give a, a blanket answer for all of the questions um, in regards of me being a father. Um, me being a father, um, my kids has taught me um, how to be a father. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because, you know, we can all say, uh, you know, don't do this or don't do that or do this and, and do that. But, you know, when you live by an example, um, you know, you can say anything you want to say, but when you can live it and you want you want to, you know, you want your words to back up, you know, uh, your lifestyle, then your lifestyle will force you to change. And I didn't want to be the parent to say, don't do this and don't do that. And then I would do it. So um, oftentimes I would think twice, sometimes two or three times before I did something because I didn't want my kids to see me doing or behaving or, or talking a certain way. So my kids has taught me a lot about being a father. Um, you know, before I, was a, before I was a dad, I would do anything I wanted to do, say anything I wanted to say. And even as I was a dad, I, I didn't learn these things until um, I, I got mature uh, in Christ and, and in my adulthood. Um, I didn't want to be the, 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 the dad, you know, um, to, to say one thing and then they see me doing uh, contrary to what I was saying. So I would always try to behave um, the same way that I was speaking. Um, and, and as a result, um, you know, my wife and I, you know, we try to lead a life that's, that's, uh, that's pleasing to God. And we like to show our kids the way a household is supposed to look as far as a mom, a dad, uh, a Christian, raising up in a Christian uh, household, uh, knowing the word of God, you know, this is what we try to do. Um, you know, so we, you know, that's, that's what, um, that's the legacy that that's, that's what I want to teach my kids. You know, and I, I don't mind. I tell my daughter all the time. I, I wouldn't mind her bringing, bringing home a man like myself. I'm not perfect, but, you know, I am a man that, that tried to do the right things uh, with, with my wife. And I try to emulate that, um, that behavior so that she can see it and my son can see it. You know, I got three boys uh, and one daughter. And I like to show them uh, how to live a life that's pleasing to God and what it's supposed to look like so that they can't say, I didn't know uh, how it's supposed to look or how it's supposed to be done. You can't say that because I've been showing you since day one. Uh, so my kids has taught me uh, how to do that. So they taught me a lot about being a dad. So that's my blanket answer for all of the questions. Um, I know I did a lot of the talking, some of the other guys did some talking as well. Um, is, is anybody else on the panel would like to, like to say anything? All right. Well, in behalf of, um, we have we got a couple of guys that's missing tonight. Um, we have Apostle Abasaki, and he's over in the UK. He wasn't able to join us tonight. Um, and we also have uh, Pastor George Wallace, which is my father-in-law. Uh, he was unable to be with us tonight, but he did uh, leave me his his bio, and it says. Uh, Pastor George Wallace has been in ministry for over 35 years, serving as leader over various ministries. He is uh, currently an associate pastor of a church without walls global, global and pastor of Sunday school, Sunday morning manor. 
uh, and it's an online class and it's, it's every Sunday morning at 930. Uh, uh, he, he's passionate about prayer and praying for others. And that's definitely true. Uh, that's why he loves being a member of Men of Intercession. And we love having him um, as a prominent uh, leader, one of the leaders that we have of Men of Intercession. Uh, he, he pours a lot into all of us, a great man of knowledge and wisdom. And uh, he was unable to be with us tonight, but we definitely gonna keep him in, in our prayers. And uh, so, so yeah, so and, uh, any, if you guys have any prayer requests, you can submit them at this time. Uh, the ones that's online, if you have any prayer requests, if you would like for us to pray with you and for you, please submit them at this time. Uh, and again, uh, if you would like more information on Men of Intercession, the contact person is Pastor Baker, and his phone number is 904-228-3806. And that's Pastor Baker, and if you want more information, in regards of men of intercession. So if we, we give it a few more minutes to wait and see if we have any prayer requests. Uh, anybody, uh, who haven't we heard from? We have uh, uh, Brother Baker. Brother Baker, is there anything that, that you'd like to add to the, to the, uh, to the discussion on tonight? You haven't, you haven't said a whole lot tonight. I'd like to give you a, a, a few, few minutes, if you will. You have anything to share? Uh, I just want to say I think this uh, this opportunity that we took to um, to talk about the fathers and all the things that we learned. I learned so much just listening to different fathers talk about their life struggles as a father. And the thing I took the most is uh, my brother, Mr. Andre, said it: "Don't do it, but don't do it alone." I'm a um, I'm a Capricorn. I'm a one of the people. I'm isolated. I stay to myself. I don't say much all the time, as as, as y'all know. But um, he made a good point. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take advantage and step out every now and then, and, and use the, the the tools that we have as men of intercession to work out these things that fathers go through. I think that's so important. So I think I, I took anything else from this meeting. I took that and hit me in the heart. And I, and I've been thinking about it since he said it. Don't do it by don't do it on your own. Just step out, reach out to the brothers, and talk to them, and be surprised how many people are going through the same thing you're going through. And I think that what we're doing now is going to change the world forever. We're gonna it's going to grow. It's going to be big. It's going to be powerful. I can't wait to see God's hand tap it just a little bit more and push it to the direction it wants us to go. So um, I'm excited about it. Amen. Amen. Well, we definitely, uh, you know, we, we enjoy having you a part of the group. Um, you know, everybody, you know, they, they, we all have our own, our own gifts that we add to the group. So we, uh, everybody is vital. Uh, even the ones that's, that's uh, not, not here tonight. Uh, we definitely miss them, but uh you know, uh, we definitely appreciate everybody uh, input and everybody, um, everybody uh, uh, knowledge <laughs> and wisdom that that uh, that you share with us tonight. Definitely appreciate it. Um, anybody else would like to say anything before we uh, end it in prayer? All right. So we're going to ask uh, Minister Wilson to pray us out, if you will. Father God, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to come before you, Father. And Father, we thank you that you're the perfect example of what a father is. Father, we ask you, Father God, that you continue to show your grace and your mercy upon us. We ask you to cover everyone's families, Father God, from, from, the, lead, from, the, from the husband on down to the mothers, the children, the grandchildren, and so on and so forth. Father, I ask you that you continually guard and protect us, continually uh, help us in our strength and our health. And Father, we thank you for every blessing that you have for us, Father. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray and say amen. 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 Well, well, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, we really appreciate all your, 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 uh, your input, your words. Uh, Pastor Becker, would you like to end with anything? All is is this well. It, it, we can go Amen. ahead and close it out. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, until we meet again, 
Uh, we're just going to close out here, and uh, we will see you all again when the Lord says so. We don't know when, but uh, I'm sure we'll probably uh, have another time, and we'll we'll be sharing some words of wisdom. But we're glad that you all enjoyed us tonight for an hour, and uh, we hope that we, that we said something that will bless you and uh, change your life. All right, well, we will see you next time.